an open session of uh, Panel A, the Medical Board of California. I'm Dr. Ron Lewis, and I'm chairing the session today. Uh, to my left, I have Administrative Law Judge Perlman, who will be um, conducting the uh, sessions, the oral arguments. Uh, so we are now in open session, and the first case that we are going to discuss is um, Dr. Cho. And I'll turn this now over to Judge Moore. Thank you. Thank you so much. There you go. Okay, so I will put us on the record. Uh, hang on one second. Um, 
with that, I think I will turn it over and I will allow Mr. Bonino to begin. <clears throat> Uh, first of all, I just do want to correct one thing. This is not just a motion for modification of the penalty. This is a case that's come back to the board on remand because Judge Kruger in Sacramento changed the underlying uh, findings on which the penalty was based and correctly concluded that as a result, it had to come back here to determine whether, given that change in the circumstances of the decision, the penalty uh, should be given. And it is our position, obviously, that it should and it really must be different. Uh, we did receive a list of, of things to discuss from the board, which we appreciate. And Dr. Cho, by the way, is not here today. Uh, but uh, we are here to ask the board, basically, uh, to suspend the penalty at this point and to let Dr. Cho, Dr. Cho proceed with his medical practice. Uh, the, the number one thing on the list from the board was protection of the public. And and there is, there is absolutely no danger, and there's no danger found by uh, the administrative law judge originally or, or Judge Kruger uh, when he reviewed it, of any kind of danger to the public from the doctor show. The issue here was the issue of charging and failure to chart and excessive use of diagnostic uh, processes uh, with regard to one family of three patients. And again, one of the uh, issues from the board was talk a little bit about the circumstances that gave rise to this case. Part of the problem here is that the circumstances have changed dramatically since the case was uh, decided by the administrative law judge. There were originally three plaintiffs, there were three patients that were involved. Basically, two of those patients have been removed from this case by the decision of Judge Cruz. <coughs> It was a mother and her two adolescent children, and we've been operating using their initials rather than their names for privacy. The mother is HP, the daughter is JYH, and the son is JHH. Uh, in any event, the, uh, the, the, the son and the daughter, the findings that Dr. Cho had not properly charted the information with regard to the son, or had improperly ordered uh, diagnostic testing with regard to the son were completely eliminated by Judge Kruger. With regard to the daughter, the claim that Dr. Cho had used excessive diagnostic procedures with her were also eliminated. The only thing left was, insofar as the daughter was concerned, that he had not charted the reason why he had used those diagnostic procedures. With regard to the mother, she, uh, HP, uh, she had a, a, a larger uh, set of claims that ran over a two-month period from March, uh, basically through the end of April of 2009. But the mother presents a problem for this board and uh, in that the mother is the one who started this entire complaint. She submitted a complaint to the board back in uh, July or June, excuse me, of 2009. And, uh, 10. and she submitted the complaint. She signed it on June 2nd. She transmitted it to the board. It wasn't received by the board, according to your records, until uh, June 23rd. The mother's own complaint says she was leaving the country for Korea. She was a Korean national, was here on a visa, and was leaving to go back to her homeland on the 24th. So she was never interviewed by any of the board investigators. She was never talked to. Dr. Cho, who she accused of all these various things, had asserted that his motivation for his actions uh, were, were improper. Uh, Dr. Cho never had the chance to question her. He never had a chance to confront this person who was the witness on the sole claim really remaining in this case. And ultimately, the administrative law judge and Judge Cooper agreed uh, concluded that Dr. Cho had failed to properly chart uh, his, uh, uh, take a break, please, straighten this out. Uh, no, go ahead. Okay, sorry. Uh, failed to properly chart uh, the, the records for HP, the mother, and also had uh, engaged in the excessive 
have used a diagnostic procedure. But that's all. This case dealt with that one family. It wasn't a claim based on this was Dr. Cho's general practice. After a four-year investigation, it was a, uh, a four-year lag, like three and a half years, between the filing of the complaint and the uh, actual hearing before the administrative law judge. This case stayed focused on that one family, on that one group of collections. And uh, the Dr. Cho had been practicing the area for 20 years. He had staff privileges at various hospitals, and there had been no complaints other than this one single complaint. Now, since then, it's been, we've been a long time getting there, not just this morning, but also between the decision and now, it's been about 20 months. Dr. Cho, as part of the penalty, was ordered to go through a various educational uh, procedures that were set forth. And he has been doing that since October of 2014. He's had a proctor doctor, Dr. Lee, who has been randomly reviewing his charts and sending in reports and commenting on it. Uh, he has been going to the, uh, the BEP programs and the PACE programs. And, and I, I'm kind of I'm, I'm cognizant of the, the, the current ones instruction not to go into things that aren't in the record, but these penalties are in the record and he has been complying with these penalties and it's important to know that. Uh, that the, the programs that he's in now, they are clinical programs where he is given patient uh, situations and he has to do an assessment and write up and do the notes and do the determination of what goes on. And he is doing all those and, and you have the results uh, somewhere within the board that somebody reported back. But it's all been satisfactory. This is not a kind of a case where- I'm going to check to this sense. Council is making representations with regard to the doctor's performance that clearly is outside the record. I don't think there's any issue with him reciting his own probation, but to the extent he's making a representation as to his performance, I'm going to object to that. That's outside the record. There's no one that's on that. Yeah, I do, Your Honor, because the fact of the matter is this has been 20 months he's been going through this education program that you ordered to review, the board ordered it to go through. And, and the reporting on that educational progress is going back to the board. And, and this, this is a little bit different from the typical case that comes here on, on, on a motion for reconsideration at the beginning of the case or on a, on a, a complete remand for redetermination on facts or something that happened in the past. The issue here is should Dr. Cho and his uh, be allowed to go back to his practice at this point, and is he a danger to the public? It was another one thing on the list. Why I work, you know, from that to the change of circumstances. We're back to the danger to the public. There is no danger to the public here by releasing Dr. Cho from the penalty after having spent 18 months taking these courses. The the issue is not all that complicated in terms of what Dr. Cho had to do, which is he has to chart and do more charting than he was doing. He has to reduce the use of diagnostic procedures. You have the records that show uh, whether that's been going on, you have the proctor's records, you have everything else, that will tell you that that is particularly... I'm going to check again, like you said, Council yeah. was suggesting the board should consider evidence that's outside the record. Yeah, let me rule on the objection that's out there. Um, I do ask you that you not add factual matters that are outside the record. Um, I know you've already stated clear that there's been some compliance with probation requirements. Um, I'll allow that to have been stated, but anything beyond that, I, I will not allow that. So I'll sustain the objection. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, moving back to the, uh, uh, the position with regard to Dr. Cho, what has happened here is with the case has basically been reduced from a claim of, of, uh, of, of, of negligent, uh, negligent conduct with regard to multiple patients, uh, repeated negligent acts, down to basically one set of findings, which is uh, the finding of use of, uh, excessive use of the procedures, and also the finding of the failure to record report repeatedly, but failure to record report with regard to HP. Under the board's guidelines, the model guidelines that the board operates under for purposes of penalty, 
standard penalty of five years probation. But the penalty also, the bond guidelines also provide that where there is one, one patient involved, even though they are repeat events with regard to one patient involved, the board can, under the proper circumstances, issue a letter of reprimand and at that point terminate the probation. That's under your model guidelines, which uh, we refer to, which the board I'm sure is familiar with. And that, that really is what should happen here. Uh, again, getting back to, is this something where uh, Dr. Cho is a danger to the public in the future? No, these findings don't indicate any kind of danger. The findings that were made don't indicate any kind of danger to the public in the future. Was he a danger to this patient? No. In fact, as you know, if you've read Dr. If you've read Dr. Uh, the, the, the patients actually benefited from many of these tests that were done. There was a question of whether they should have been done was resolved against Dr. Cho, but nonetheless. Uh, is there any kind of moral culpability involved here? No. None of these claims were moral charges against Dr. Cho. He was not dealing with drugs. He So, Dr. Cho, admittedly, 
his charting was encrypted. To put it as good as you can. On the other hand, Dr. Saxon, who she was arguing for, uh, would have been involved in charting like a fighter. And I don't think either one is appropriate. There is a middle ground there, and it is not that hard to achieve. The Reyes is undoubtedly going to tell you that uh, Judge Kruger said that uh, based on everything he had done, he couldn't say that, uh, that this, uh, this was, uh, this was a gross abuse of discretion to give the penalty to the board meeting. But he went on to say that where there is a change that's made that creates a real doubt, he was quoted from the Eisenhower case, a real doubt as to whether or not this was the correct penalty, it has to go back to the board. And in this case, there was a change. It has to come back to this board. And, and the, the proper thing, I think, would be to end Dr. Joe's career. Thank you, Mr. Premier. Okay, at this time, we'll hear from Ms. Reyes. Thank you. Um, this is actually not a very difficult case uh, for the court to consider. Um, essentially, what the Superior Court found was that um, two simple departures were not um, supported by the way of the evidence, and they did relate to the children that had been cited. Um, there was a third finding that the court found was also not supported, and that related to one instance of um, using diagnostic procedures without having documented medical indication for it, and that related to the mother's case where um, x-rays and, and, and MRI, I think it was, was ordered for her. That was not a cause in and of itself. It was simply one instance um, in uh, of gross negligence and excessive use of diagnostic procedures. So essentially what the Superior Court did was find that two simple departures were not uh, supported by the way of the evidence. What the court upheld and what is the significant uh, findings in this case uh, relate to the findings of gross negligence um, and also excessive use of diagnostic procedures. And contrary to counsel's argument, this was not a case of just failure to document. What the findings were is that Dr. Cho failed to adequately um, take a history and perform an adequate physical examination in order to have an understanding of what the place were and make a determination of appropriate medical care. Uh, that was not done, and he simply resorted to the use of diagnostic uh, testing without having first developed a differential diagnosis or even really taking a history um, with regard to several of the complaints that the mother had, had made in this case. So to the extent that it's been argued here that this was simply inadequate documentation, he's now taking some coursework, he's okay, you want to let him off the hook, that's absolutely not the case. Um, this was serious misconduct on his part, and he really had no explanation. Um, if you consider what was laid out in the decision, um, and I think that the um, decision very thoroughly uh, discusses what the evidence was presented at the hearing, um, the findings are that Dr. Cho simply didn't ask sufficient questions to understand what the patient's complaints were, what the symptoms were, in order to uh, develop a differential diagnosis and determine what the appropriate course of treatment was. Um, and so, uh, again, I think uh, the decision very carefully lays out what the evidence was, and in fact, really the issue with regard to charting was, um, in part, that Dr. Cho that Dr. Cho testified at the hearing to um, extensive information that he claimed to have obtained from the patients that he argued supported his medical decision making, except that, um, as the decision points out, is his explanations uh, were so convoluted and so, I think, um, uh, bizarre that they were rejected. Uh, he had indications, made statements that his notes, the reference to the words when he wrote that the patient still had something, it meant several different things that he had it for uh, a lengthy period of time, that it also meant that they had gotten prior treatment, um, and it was just essentially ridiculous, and I think uh, appropriately the board, uh, the board had rejected those statements that he made. Um, this case is about a physician who 
uh, was unable to explain the most basic uh, responsibility for um, taking history from his patient and doing an adequate um, examination to support uh, the use of diagnostic testing. I think what the record demonstrated here was that for an internist, it was very unusual. Dr. Cho has uh, an MRI machine, he has an X-ray machine, and several other machines that he used in his practice, which is unusual for an internist. Um, but what, but in making the findings about the excessive use, what the decision lays out is it's unclear why Dr. Cho excessively uh, resorted to the use of Im imaging studies. And what was noted, it was unclear whether or not it related to his diagnostic skills, whether it related to his clinical judgment, or whether, whether it related to his ethics, was not clear based on the evidence that was presented. But uh, I, I think that doesn't really matter. What matters is that the record clearly demonstrates this practice um, of excessively resorting to the diagnostic um, um, use of diagnostic tools. Um, counsel is correct. What the ultimate decision after the Superior Court um, determinations is that the case regarding mother survives, and as I've indicated, that's where most predominantly, actually almost all of the misconduct occurred here. Um, there was some minor instances the simple departures related to the children and only one cause related to the one child survived um, after the Superior Court hearing. But what's clear is that in order for the board to make a determination that a five-year probation is appropriate, it's not required that you have multiple patients. The findings with regard to the gross negligence and the excessive use of diagnostic procedures is adequate. The board's not required to have multiple patients in order to impose that type of penalty. So the fact that the other minor children, one of the children was knocked out and there's one cause surviving with regard to the other child um, does not require uh, a different result. And in fact, I would argue under the circumstances of this case and consistent with the medical board's disciplinary guidelines, the five-year probation is appropriate. And given the findings in this case, um, the terms and conditions are appropriate as well. The PACE evaluation is appropriate to, do, to evaluate what the deficiencies are and what the, perhaps um, deficiencies in knowledge and practice are in order to um, establish an appropriate educational program of remediation. And so that, I think, um, is absolutely appropriate. The requirements that he complete the medical record keeping course and they have a monitor is absolutely appropriate so that the board can get feedback uh, with regard to Dr. Cho incorporating things that he's learned in the educational coursework into his practice um, and that the board get feedback with regard to how he's performing and that he's in fact um, performing consistent with the standard of care. Um, I, I objected to, and I just want to point out that it's, I think it's absolutely not appropriate for this board to consider whether or not the coursework that Dr. Cho has completed since he was placed on probation, he can now use as grounds to say, I shouldn't have gotten that penalty to begin with. Uh, that's absolutely not appropriate. Um, what this board is to consider is we're going back to where we were when the decision was first imposed. Um, and, you know, the writ process takes as long as it takes, and that's why we're here today is to consider whether or not the evidence supports the discipline the board imposed or the board to reconsider based on the, um, the uh, findings by the Superior Court. And my contention is that with the determination that two simple departures um, are no longer supported by the evidence, again, the most egregious conduct, though, related to the gross negligence and not adequately um, taking histories and doing uh, physical examinations um, and the excessive use of the diagnostic procedures, those causes stand. And consistent with the board's disciplinary guidelines, a five-year probation is appropriate. Um, and I would argue that the board need not change its, its discipline uh, decision that the evidence remains to support that. And as counsel has noted, the Superior Court found 
that under the circumstances of the case, the Superior Court could not find that the penalty the board imposed was excessive. But I think in an abundance of caution, I think the Superior Court judge did not feel it was appropriate for him to make that determination, and he chose to defer to the board's expertise in determining whether or not the penalty should be affected in any way. And I would argue that it should not, um, that the evidence supports uh, the, the uh, penalty that was imposed. And I think another thing for this board to consider, and I think has been reiterated here, is Dr. Cho has no understanding of his deficiencies. He defended his conduct throughout the hearing, and they continue to argue that this was simply charting deficiencies, but there's no other problems with him, and that he should therefore be committed to practice freely. That absolutely is not true. Um, he's never recognized and never acknowledged um, his excessive use of the diagnostic procedure in this case, or his family's inadequately investigating the patient's complaints. And I think that's something that this court, the board, needs to consider in determining what the appropriate penalty is. Is this doctor has demonstrated he doesn't doesn't even have insight or understanding of his deficiencies. With regard to the harm, uh, allegations regarding no harm, um, I think the board is well aware that harm is not required in order to impose uh, discipline. Uh, the argument that he doesn't pose a danger, that's, I suppose that's a relative term, but that's not exactly true. What he's exposing these patients to is excessive radiation on x-rays that are not necessary and they're not required. That's not innocent. Um, and these were two young children, although I'll always draw that, the finding that the children don't. But as to the mother, there's multiple tests that were done here that were absolutely not necessary. And if the um, argument in the court, the board would note in the record, the argument made at hearing in that regard was that there's been no uh, study that has proven um, that excessive radiation causes harm, but I think it's generally accepted in the practice that, um, um, that that diagnostic testing should be considered and only used for medically appropriate, um, and that's not the case with Dr. Cho, and again, we don't know why he engaged in this practice, but I think the availability of the machines in his office makes that extremely easy to just resort to that, but I think that needs to be reined in. Uh, because it is a threat to the public. And they've never cited one, 
Uh, the, the quote about you don't really need R to have gross negligence comes from the, I believe, the Carroll case, uh, which is a case where the patient, one had brain damage and the other one had respiratory effect. And they, you know, they, 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 that's, you know, if it is from Griffiths, which is what the drunk driving case. So that is not, there is no authority for that. Would uh, you spell the case name for the record? Sure, it's K, yes, K E A R L. Thank you. And, uh, and those are cases are cited in pages 10 and 11 of the authority. With regard to the x-ray danger, even the administrative law judge rejected that as a danger to give rise to some kind of criticism of Dr. Cho. And finally, with regard to HP, and I started with this about her leaving the country on uh, June 24th of 2010, or right after she dropped uh, this complaint in. Uh, she, Dr. Cho tested, really is her examination, her treatment, that was at issue here and is at issue here, given the foundation we're at now. He testified that she came in, she said she was going back to Korea, her visa was expiring, she wanted a complete workup, a physical workup before she left to go to Korea. The administrative law judge ultimately rejected that. The point is, this wasn't just something where he put her, at least according to Dr. Cho, where he put her through all these tests without a reason. The reason was she was concerned about her health. She wanted to have a check here before she went back there. Her record complaint says she was going back there on June 24th and she knew it when she went to see Dr. Joe. So, uh, you know, it's not quite uh, correct to say that he was just doing all this stuff uh, to make things, oh my gosh, okay, to anyway, uh, make things responsibility of this board is protection of the public. And um, I'll reiterate that in order for the board to act, it does not, it is not required that there be some harm that the board respond to. Um, the protection of the public, the, the, the imposition of discipline under appropriate circumstances is for purposes of prevention. So the fact that we don't have egregious harm, for example, in this particular case, well, that's a good thing. That's okay, but that doesn't mean that Dr. Cho gets to go on practicing inappropriately and outside the standard of practice uh, because he deems it to be appropriate. Um, the, the, the goal to prevent future harm um, is purpose for, is sufficient purpose for imposing discipline. Uh, with regard to the uh, contention that Dr. Cho had justification for doing these various procedures as to the mother because she was going to be leaving the country, I'll refer to the record, which indicates that Dr. Cho did not learn that she was leaving the country until later in her care. And if you look at his treatment, most of the uh, di diagnostic studies that he did were in the first couple of sessions, and then there were some uh, additional ones in the early weeks of her treatment. So that doesn't provide justification um, for the testing that he did, because he, and even if she was leaving, um, that isn't grounds to simply conduct testing to satisfy yourself of something. He still has to have a medical indication for having done those tests. And in several instances, he had never even obtained adequate information with regard to the complaints um, that would have even supported his performance of some of these tests. So I think a, a careful look at the record will not support um, that argument that was made. Um, you know, unless the board has questions for me, I'm assuming. Does anyone have any questions? No. Okay. I do. Uh, yes, we have a question. And would you say your name and Dr. Ron Lewis? And would you spell your name? L E W I S. The question is um, the type of um, practice the Dr. Cho the Dr. Cho has. Um, can you tell me the type of practice he has? He's an insurance. Yes. He's board certified in yes. internal medicine? Yes. And does he have, um, I'm trying to understand from the, the record here, reading, 
is it a transient practice um, where people come in, in and out visiting, or is it an established um, type of practice where you have a established group of patients? You can't tell where they're. The limitation on that, I think, he, 70 to 80 percent of his practice uh, is patients who are Korean uh, and who are Korean natives, and either you're, some of them are temporary. There was no division with regard to how many were temporarily here. Now, and temporarily could be, as you know, under some of these visas, you know, a long period of time. Uh, or were permanent residents of this area, uh, but they were basically uh, three quarters Korean. Okay, thank you. Is there anything you wanted to add? Uh, having been the trial counsel, this state counsel representation is appropriate. Uh, Dr. Cho was located in the Silicon Valley, and so many of his patients are here on visas, as counsel says, temporary, but it could be a number of years um, working here. Um, for any number of years, so a lot of his patients, a uh, significant portion are um, foreign nationals, Koreans, and their family members who are here in the country uh, temporarily, but again, as counsel says, it could still be a number of years. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for anyone? No. Yeah. Not seeing any questions, the matter will be taken under submission and we'll go off the record. Thank you. Thank you. And if you'll leave for a moment, I think the court reporter will have a document for you in case you need to transfer some more. Yeah. 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 Oh, we're